Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we take a look at the astrological energies from April 17th until April 24th. And wow, we have a spicy week ahead. We're talking five star spicy with the Jupiter Uranus conjunction that will be exact at 21 degrees of Taurus on April 20th. Plus, we have the Scorpio full moon occurring on April. 23rd. In addition, we have the energies of Aries still piping hot. Mercury is still retrograde in Aries, and we're going to have some focus on Venus in Aries this week as well. Now, I don't know about you, but this has felt like the longest Aries season ever, like it's been four months of Aries season, but that's because we've been talking about these themes and expressions for a while especially with Chiron conjunct the North Node in Aries back in February, Mercury retrograde in Aries, and the eclipse energies we've been moving through. So a lot has been going on in the Aries and Taurus areas of your chart, and we've also been feeling the strong presence of Pisces energies with Saturn, Mars, and Neptune all in Pisces, which continues this week as well. So as we're moving through this middle period of April into the second half of the month, there could be things here that you are firmly realizing. And I see it as swords of truth. There could be something that you're clearly seeing, right? Like call a spade a spade. See it for what it is. Accept it at face value. Understand what is shining through. It's the light of truth shining on something that you are meant to truly trust. You're really meant to believe it. And that could be where you're feeling that push of growth. Sort of like, have you ever had that internal battle with yourself where you're like, I don't want to believe this about this person, or I want to see the best in them, or really stick to the positive? This energy is more about shining a light on something truthful that you're meant to see for what it is, as is, and allow that to also be neutral, neutral. Put some baking soda on it, cover it in beige, do whatever you can to neutralize it because this is where we are also seeing the truth of something that is meant to support us and guide us forward. And so part of the growth here is removing anything that feels overly personal or too emotional, which can occur when we have both fire and water signs emphasized, which is the case, and it's been the case for a while now. But thankfully, we will see the sun enter Taurus on April 19th. This occurs at 9.59 a.m., that's Eastern Time, and that will bring in more of a stabilizing influence. That's where you could just feel stronger, grounded, clearer even. And there could be something that you're ready to more fully integrate. Because the sun in Taurus is about the energy of what we want to build or take forward from what the Aries energy started. And so moving in to Taurus season is more about assessment and planning, taking stock. Will this work? Do I have the time for this? Did I start too much? Am I being pulled in too many directions? Aries being a cardinal fire sign will initiate a lot. It brings up that enthusiastic beginning. Let's go for it. I'm ready. I want this. And then the Taurus energy comes in to have you realistically determine Do I have what I need to make this a part of my reality? And so part of this week could be bringing your attention to those themes. And this could in fact be part of that light of truth where you're seeing something in a way that you realize it stays or it goes, or perhaps you're seeing it as just a passing option or something that you don't really want to take forward. Not only has it been a long Aries season, but we still have this Mercury retrograde in Aries. And over this next week, we're going to see Mercury more contemplative, more internal, and perhaps 
and perhaps more retracted, where there are things you just want to sit with and think through. And that is advisable at this time for all the ways that Mercury and Aries will speak before it thinks, will do too much too fast, and then realize, oh, maybe I should have given that more thought before I said yes or before I said no. It is advisable this week to trust the slowdown, to give yourself that time and space. It is next week, April 25th, that Mercury will station direct at 15 degrees of Aries and 59 minutes, basically conjunct the North Node as well. And once that Mercury stations direct, there is a full stop. And that's where we're going. We're moving towards something that we're meant to be sitting with. And again, I feel this as the swords of truth, you know, something that is presenting itself very clear, very evident, and you could be figuring out what do I say? What do I do? Where do I take this information? How do I use it? See, Mercury is not only what we say and what we think about. Mercury is also what we hear, the information we hear and take in and how it affects us. And even if your intention is to sit with it or think it through, the energy is pulsing quite strongly right now. It's requiring us to do something with it. And maybe this is part of that dance or part of what you're figuring out is how can I remain responsible with my truth, with my light, with what I want to say and do even while Mercury is retrograde. So in other words, it could be hard to bite your tongue. It could be hard to hold back. But it is important right now to remain in integrity and self-respect. It's also important to note that at this time, the energies on the planet are really clear. And I'm seeing them as quite translucent, where there are things that are shining through that are not hidden, that are not murky or camouflaged. They're quite evident. And so this is where it's also important with strong Aries energy to be honest, to be truthful, and to know that your intention matters. And that could be something that you're sitting with as well, is going to the core of what is my intention here? What am I seeking to experience or create next? With these, with these initiating energies of Aries and how am I doing so in a way that honors my intuition, my integrity, my power, and my integrity? Because there can be a whiplash effect if any of that is not in alignment. Sort of like, you know how people take screenshots of text messages, of things that they're sharing with other people, and they pass it around and think it's hidden or think people don't know. Well, that's not the case anymore. We're too intuitive. We're too energetically aware. It's like those are the kinds of things that people see. Or perhaps it's something in the office place that you're picking up around the energies that feel so clear to you. Of course, apply this to your family, to your friends, to anything that you're sensing. And it could feel like a new sensation. It could feel like, wow, I'm seeing things more clearly than ever right now. And it's a little bit surprising. Maybe it's even something that you're doubting. But this is in fact right on time with how we're elevating and ascending where we're meant to be trusting the merging power of our intuition and our minds. So look for that right now. Look for what's showing up for you. Look at what your spirit guides are directing you to trust. Now over this next week, you could also feel yourself moving through something quite quickly. And that is part of the influence of Jupiter conjunct Uranus at 21 degrees of Taurus, which is exact on April 20th at 1027 p.m. That's Eastern time. But what also is coming through is Mars in Pisces making an exact sextile to this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. And Mars in Pisces is pushing your intuition forward, pushing something into your awareness that you're really meant to understand and you're meant to fully own it and integrate it in a way that supports this quantum expansion energy. 
Now, I did a separate podcast for you on the Jupiter Uranus conjunction and how it's opening up a new 14 year cycle, a new birthing of creation codes, energies that are going to be evident and showing up for us to work with, to play with, also to experience in our physical world. This is where you could have sudden bursts of opportunities, resources, developments. This is where something could come through really quickly that absolutely has your name on it. And that's because of Jupiter's influence. Jupiter provides not only the expansion and amplification of what Uranus in Taurus is activating, but Jupiter being the biggest planet in our solar system also acts as spiritual protection, also brings in basically energetic bumpers to help us navigate these changes where you're protected by some pillows or some soft spots to help you with the changes that are occurring. And with the Mars and Pisces sextile coming through, again, it is a spiritual push forward. And it's something that you're ready for, even if it feels a bit overwhelming or too much. It's part of what's needed on the planet now because there is a direct connection here to these new energies and what is opening up on planet Earth at this time. Now, Gaia is always alive, is always moving and shaking. It is normal for Gaia to be experiencing seismic activity every day through eruptions, through earthquakes, through volcanic activity, all of it and more. In fact, right now we're seeing with Mount Etna in Sicily, these vortex rings coming out. She is sending up smoke signals, which is certainly signaling that change is happening deep within us, deep inside the earth, and even deep within the 3D matrix. In Greek mythology, Mount Etna was the site of the god Vulcan, and that was where he had his blacksmithing location, which is in fact a beautiful understanding of how the energies of fire and earth work together and how they shape and form through that intense heat of the flame to shift something into a new form because we know that wrought iron and steel require a lot of intensity just to change. And so that makes me think of the Taurus energies where Taurus is fixed earth. And here we have the pressure of this fire that is requiring evolutionary growth. So I feel like Mount Etna smoke rings are signaling to us that we're really moving through this deep evolutionary process that ready or not, it's happening. It's happening within us. It's happening on the planet. And so what are you forging in your life under the intensity of the Aries and Taurus themes right now, because that is going to play out not only for this next month through Taurus season, but for a longer cycle because of the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. And then that Mars and Pisces sextile is not only a behind the scenes push from your soul, your spirit guides, your intuition, but it's supporting your own ascension at this time to create something that you haven't experienced before. And I am feeling this as creating new soul contracts, creating new connections, creating something new in your life that's beautifully connected to peace, harmony, beauty, what's in your heart. This feels like an expansive heart chakra energy where if you were to really intentionally make something that you love, even by writing it out, creating a vision board, doing something that you want to manifest in the physical world, it's almost like your spirit guides are right there helping you with that, especially if it comes from the purity of your heart and it's based on next level experiences. And I feel like that's a really big energy here with the Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus, next level earthly experiences connected to what you love, what you need, what you want, and also something that maybe you felt 
was just a dream. It was just something far away in a distant land, a wonderful ideal. And now Mars is saying, no, let's make it real. Let's move from this intention. Let's create something beautiful that not only supports you at an individual level, but also beautifully supports humanity. And that's something that is needed in the collective at this time, where it can benefit the collective energy grid. It's something that is designed to bring in more peace, which we need right now. We can see all the ways that the war energies are ramping up. But how can we energetically diminish those, balance those? How can we energetically work with those from a place of energetic mastery, knowing that the yin energy is essential at this time, the ways that we can calm what is inflamed, the ways that we can settle into some peaceful energies instead of ramping up any of those big reactions or anger, anything that actually is coming from the lower root chakra, which is where things can get heavily triggered and you could feel something rising up within you, you becoming a volcano, if you will, and it erupting and coming out. But how can you consciously work with that through the intention of reprogramming, of allowing yourself to create something new and different. And I feel like this entry into Taurus season is going to open up more peaceful avenues or more ways of working with the energy that can calm things down. Now, of course, we could only do this at an individual level, but the individual affects the collective. And the more each of us takes this on, the more it can certainly be a part of the collective energy grid. So that would be something to assess and look at at this time. How can you approach something in a new way, in a new place of empowerment? How can you also reflect on, okay, in the past, I would have done this. I would have said this. I would have handled this issue in this way. Now, I've learned a lot about my energy. I know more of who I am. More choices are available to me. What am I going to consciously choose in order to work with these energies through a more feminine, yin, peaceful expression? And thankfully, that is one of the energies coming up this week. Now, on that note, we also have a very strong Venus in Aries working through the second half of Aries as she makes a conjunction to the North Node in Aries at 15 degrees on April 17th. Then she will make a conjunction to Mercury retrograde at 17 degrees on April 19th, and then a conjunction to Chiron in Aries at 20 degrees on April 21st. So Venus is quite active this week with her conjunctions, and conjunctions are focused energy points. They are bringing your awareness to something, specifically between 15 to 20 degrees of Aries in your chart, and this means she's also triggering that Aries solar eclipse that we just had on April 8th. And so what I feel with this Venus in Aries, who is independent, pioneering, a strong warrior, and quite confident, is that she's learning how to harness her power in a new way. Almost like, how can I be softer? And this isn't something that Venus in Aries would typically consider or sit with. But as she meets up with the North Node, She's learning new ways to handle things, new ways to be herself, to love herself, to love her strength, but to also have a realistic checking in point on how it's played out in relationships because every conjunction to the North Node is an opposition to the South Node. And the South Node in Libra is where we are becoming aware of relationship patterns, how we show up and communicate what we say, how we have the ability to receive as well as offer. And I feel like this Venus is being reprogrammed a bit here with this conjunction to the North Node, Mercury retrograde, the solar eclipse point, and Chiron. There's something here where she's like, okay, I don't have to use 
all of my energy or force to make a point. Maybe I don't have to do everything on my own. Maybe there's a new way to look at this or to handle this. So this Venus in Aries has the potential to improve something in herself. Now, Venus is also connected with your self-confidence, your appearance, your clothes and your style. She's related to beauty and how she presents herself. And so there could be things that you're slightly shifting or changing this week through this Venus energy, perhaps something that feels more like you or that is new, something you haven't done before that makes you feel more confident in your skin. And that would be one of the best ways to use this Venus energy this week is to focus on self-improvement, what allows you to love and accept yourself more, and where you feel your energy giving a yes. Now, not only is Venus elevated through these conjunctions this week, but she's the ruling planet of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus, since Taurus is ruled by Venus, and the Sun entering Taurus. So Venus is important right now, which means that relationships are important. Connections are more significant. And I feel this goes back to the truth of a situation, the truth of something that you are feeling and sensing that you're being guided to trust and honor and perhaps even strike out on your own. Do something on your own terms or in your own way because this Venus and Aries will support your independence. It will also support the personal integrity of what you're not going to tolerate what you're not going to play into, what you're not going to allow or energetically connect with. And that right there could offer some kind of beautiful breakthrough or insight into what you want next. So there can be a go it alone energy at this time, but it's meant to also help you with what you're creating next through this Jupiter Uranus conjunction in Taurus. I also feel like there could be something immediately validating right? Like you speak up or you say something or you trust an insight or something comes through and right away the universe says you're correct. That's it. That is what you're meant to know. That is what you're meant to see. So with this fast moving energy, don't be surprised if you get some kind of validation, you know, less than 10 minutes later that shows you that you are on the right track. Now, as we move in to Taurus season, starting on April 19th. We of course have this conjunction on April 20th. And then on April 21st, the sun in Taurus squares Pluto in Aquarius at two degrees. And then we have the Scorpio full moon on April 23rd at four degrees. All of this means is that important adjustments and changes are being required by this Pluto in Aquarius that is opening up future potentials. Something has to change in your comfort zone. Something you've been resisting is actually not going to last. Meaning, if you've been pushing something away, especially a truth, something that you're meant to really understand and evolve, that is going to be a part of this week's potential struggles because This is an intense energy where our physical reality is shifting in a permanent way. Now, that's a big topic. That's a big category, right? But at a personal level, you're looking at two degrees of Taurus in your chart and two degrees of Aquarius because this is the first time that the sun in Taurus has met up with Pluto in Aquarius. And so this could be something financial. This could be creative. This could be something that you want to invest in or build. And Pluto in Aquarius is requiring you to look at the long term, to look at what could the bigger vision be? Who are the people involved? What do you need to do now to get where you need to go? And honestly, when the sun, which is the light, the light source on our planet, meets up with Pluto, the furthest away from the sun that can have a very dense, dark energy, something is revealed that we don't like. 
something comes up to the surface that we have to see and we have to understand as part of either our reality, our experience, or something that's been energetically affecting us. And so this is where changes occur, almost like forced life changes. Like, okay, I've got to cut out that bill. I've got to sell this thing. I have too much on my plate. I can't do it all. It is creating too much stress. I'm on overload and overwhelm. I need to streamline it. Perhaps a creative project or endeavor has some big changes or complications. Pluto squaring the sun always requires something to transform and shift, but it brings up an unknown. It brings up something we didn't see before that also could show up as a fear. Now, we then have this energy continuing on with the Scorpio full moon on April 23rd at four degrees of Scorpio. I have a video for you on YouTube going through the chart of this particular full moon and Just a quick backstory here. Right before I recorded that full moon chart, I got news from my sister-in-law that one of her dear friends was diagnosed with stage four cancer, and my sister-in-law has her moon in Scorpio. So I was really feeling that energy as I went through that particular chart because of the Scorpio themes that were so present. But the gift of Scorpio is to face our fears, to face exactly what that is, which is not easy and brings us into experiences that we wouldn't actively choose. But Scorpio is meant to strengthen us. That is the case with the fixed signs and Scorpio being fixed water. It's to strengthen our emotional core, to strengthen our intuitiveness and our ability to move through situations that can feel very very heavy, dense, or dark. And so this Scorpio full moon is not an easy one by any means. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Um, In fact, it brings up things that are going to dramatically change on the planet. We have the sun and the moon both squaring Pluto. And when the moon is squaring Pluto, it's something personal. It's something that we're deeply feeling that we need to clear out and purge that can ultimately elevate us. And I feel like on the more positive spectrum of that Scorpio full moon, there are messages and insights that we're going to be receiving that we see in a truthful light, meaning there's things you could be understanding. There's things you could be accepting and honoring that support your enlightenment, that support something that you are working through. And maybe you realize, hey, It's not the end of the road. It's not or the worst case scenario. It's another experience of energy. It's another experience of intense energies and you're able to apply your mastery and your toolkit to navigate it. So if you have planets or points between especially two five degrees of the fixed signs. This is a Scorpio full moon that's working with you more personally. Two to five degrees is the hot spot, if you will. So that would be Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. And the square to Pluto can bring in something life-changing. It can bring in something dramatic and permanent and something that reshapes you or puts you on a new path or new direction. It's also important to note that anytime the Taurus Scorpio axis is highlighted, it is the energy of finances, economics, the stock market, you know, what's happening on Wall Street and how that affects Main Street. Um, it's about the money we make and earn as well as the money we spend and the debt we have. Now, the square from Pluto is going to show us where we need to make some solid, clear changes in order to better support our well-being. And even though this could be something that you're like, oh, I don't want to have to do this, it is going to help you for the long term, meaning it's going to be something that pays off, even if in the short term, it is an inconvenience or not something you would normally want to do. Part of this, in fact, with Pluto and Aquarius is how, you know, we have all this influence of AI coming into all these different industries and platforms. Of course, AI is really big on meta 
uh, which is Facebook, Instagram, and threads. And then, of course, the ways that AI is being integrated in various industries and companies. All of that is changing our jobs, is changing what is needed in the workforce, and is changing, of course, what is being hired or what is valued in the workforce. So part of Pluto in Aquarius is bringing in these technologies that then result in people losing their jobs. And I know that's already been happening over the past few years, but Pluto in Aquarius focuses in on technology jobs, software, engineering, um, things that basically can be programmed or new technologies are coming in to do the work faster, cheaper, better, and then how this is affecting each of us at a personal level, how it's affecting families and communities, how it's changing cities and, and the ripple effect, the ripple effect that comes about. And these types of changes are a big deal in so many ways because it means people are forced to determine a new career path, to look at what am I going to do next if I went to school for all this education, for all of this technical knowledge, and now I'm being replaced by a computer, what do I do next? And it's such a contrast to, let's say about 25 years ago. Do you remember in the late 1990s and in 2000, there was this huge online boom of jobs, online jobs, doing e-commerce, doing anything with the technical skill set. You were in demand. You were needed. That's all changing. It's all changing. And some very smart, educated people are going to be displaced and are going to be needing to find a new occupation, a new way to use their skill set. And that is part of these shifts and changes that are happening right now that will continue over the next few years, especially. So I share this with the intention of it being a heads up or perhaps something that gives you new ways to look at what you can do in the world. You know, what cannot be replaced or what can you do uniquely that is satisfying, that's good for you, even if there are changes you have to make in terms of your lifestyle, in terms of where you live or what's going on for your family. Again, these are big life changes. This is a big deal and it's hitting people. It's coming through. You know, we're getting these announcements of massive layoffs and thousands of people are without jobs. We are looking at how do we then start a new chapter or move into a new industry that can be stable for the long term. So we are going to have people doing some deep soul searching, deep soul searching. Maybe you're in that right now. Maybe you're feeling that or you're witnessing it even in a family member or friend or someone that you know. And what I want to offer is that when the universe brings in these big shifts and life changes, there is always another lily pad to leap to. There's always a new beginning. There's always something else that's going to come through. And it probably is not going to look how you think it will. That's also part of this Jupiter conjunct Uranus and Taurus, which is opening up to more more that you're capable of, more that you love or enjoy. And you probably thought, I never went to school for this, or I don't even have much credibility here. I'm not an expert in this. But having a beginner's mind is where you can move into something that will be satisfying and rewarding, that will introduce you to more of what you're capable of, what you love, what you enjoy, and shifts you into a new reality in your experience. So that is part of not only the Scorpio full moon, but the bigger changes that are coming through with Jupiter conjunct Uranus in Taurus. Now, the other thing I want to share about this is that when there is a dead end in an industry, uh, let's say software, let's say something with the technology I've been talking about, when there's a dead end there, there is something beautifully divine about that in the higher realms, where what you're doing is rebalancing the energy. So if there has been too much focus on the mind, too much focus on the masculine, too much investment in logic and rationale, what the universe is doing is rebalancing the energy to open up more that could be perhaps more of your passion, more of your desire, more of your intuition and your creativity in a new way. There could be something balancing all that yang with more yin 
all the masculine with more feminine, also something that wants to bring in more enjoyment so that you don't feel like you're sitting in a compartmentalized expression of your energy. Because as I say that, I'm getting the visual of a factory and how it's needed to have the factory experience, right? To go through a linear process, uh, to be efficient, to build, to make something, all of that. But I'm seeing how the universe is like, okay, great, you've got that down. Now it's time for a reassignment. Now it's time for a new skill development and to stay on track with what you can do in this lifetime that is fitting for you. And again, supports your ongoing creative energy and personal development, which of course is so individual for each of us. So I'm just talking in a bigger picture here. I'm just painting bigger strokes of the changes that are happening on the planet that will continue to happen on the planet and hopefully providing a heads up that if there is this kind of reassignment, if your industry is shutting down and you see it written on the walls, right? You see where this road is going. The universe is giving you a nudge right now or a heads up to expand the vision of your life. And to look at where there has been any limited expectations or limited programming around what you can do on the planet that's valuable, that's needed, that's enjoyable, that's respected. It's opening it up so that you can see that there is, of course, another direction or another answer. I'm also feeling the energy of what is being shut down is asking us to pull our energy out of it so that we're not overly identifying with a job, a title, a position, a company, whatever that might be, to remember that you're just visiting that space. You are just a temporary contributor to that space. And so what do you want to call in next that is actually truer or better for you? It's sort of like that quote, which is that if you don't build your dream, someone else will hire you to build theirs. And I feel like many people are going to start feeling a new pulsing of energy around what they want in this lifetime. And so I am going to move this into a positive development, a positive outcome, because I believe that is the intention. Of course, takes what resonates for you, but there's something here where the redirect and the changes can lead you to more than what you ever thought was possible. If you have that intention, if that's your mindset, and if it's not, That's completely your free will, but I hope this helps with guiding you through the turbulence of change that is happening on the planet now. So yes, it is a spicy week, five star spicy, and in the higher realms, it's absolutely on time. It is right on time for what we are here to create on the planet, how our values are changing, how our experiences of our communities cultures and countries are also changing as well. On a personal level, you would want to look at where you have 21 to 22 degrees of Taurus in your chart as the house is where these changes are coming through, a birthing of new potentials in your life, as well as where changes can happen suddenly and quickly. And overall, I feel these as beneficial changes with that Jupiter influence. Remember, Jupiter is providing a bumper. It's like soft pillows along the edges to help with what is ready to shift for you. In addition to looking at your natal chart, you can also look at your solar return chart to see where 21 to 22 degrees of Taurus is coming up for you, as this might show you more of what you're also experiencing through that house placement. And this is where people often ask, but which one is primary? Which chart is more important? Your natal chart is always primary because your natal astrology chart is your energy signature for this lifetime. Your solar return is the energy signature 
for a 12 month cycle. And so it shows you where the energies will play out. And so when we look at a natal chart, you can see, okay, this is happening in my seventh house, in my 11th house, in my first house. That is where the changes are happening for you long term. But then in your solar return, it could be happening in any other house. And that could show you more of what is going to evolve for you over this current 12 month cycle. So as an example, let's say this conjunction is happening for you in your first house. That would be the house of self-identity, how you know yourself, what you enjoy, what you're ready to do in a new way that resonates with your personal value and how you love and appreciate yourself. This first house is the beginning of understanding who you are. Now let's say in your solar return chart, this particular Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is happening in the sixth house. Well, that means you would take those themes of the first house and apply it to the sixth house of perhaps lifestyle, health, work, service, things you want to do in a new way that better reflect your first house values. Okay, so you would be connecting the two houses in your chart. I realize this is more advanced, And I don't want to confuse some of you, but understand that this is how astrology becomes more alive and more specific. So you would then take, okay, this is happening in my first house, in my natal chart, and it's showing up in my solar return sixth house. So I know I can fine tune the energy even more through those sixth house expressions. And then for someone else, the conjunction could be happening in their third house of daily activities, communications, uh, where their mind goes, what they have to take care of in a day. And then let's say in their solar return, it's happening in their eighth house. Then they would be looking at more of their finances, more of the energy they're sharing with others, what they are responsible for that they need to see in a new light and where those changes are ready. So you can connect two houses between your natal astrology chart and your solar return in order to get more specifics. And if you're new to a solar return chart, I can teach you how to read that, how to interpret it, what to look at for the 12 month cycle that commences on your actual solar return. Check out that course. I'll put a link below the podcast because this is a course you come back to every year on your birthday to go through the exercises again in order to interpret your solar return energy. It shows you the areas of life highlighted for you this year. And it's wildly different every year. I mean, if you have your solar return sun in the 12th house, that's going to be very different than if your solar return sun is in the 10th house or in the 7th house. So this is where you get a heads up into your energy for the year ahead. And you also further your own astrological knowledge and become more of your own astrologer, which is part of your own empowerment So if you're already in the program, feel free to log back in if you want to go through anything or revisit your solar return information for the current cycle that you're in, or feel free to join the course. It is still 50% off with coupon code BIRTHDAY, and I really hope it supports you in what you are moving through right now. So big energies this week. Take good care of yourself. Um, It could be normal to have disrupted sleep. When we have strong Uranus energy, it can be harder to settle or to find more calm. So do what you need to do to take care of your body, your mind, your emotions, whatever might be activated for you. And I also hope you connect with some beneficial messages and insights right now as we move through this powerful week. If you're interested in studying astrology more, check out all of my classes over at mollymccord.online and please check out my YouTube playlists where you'll find a ton of free content and information that I hope helps you master the basics of astrology while also taking you to the next level. I'll be back every Monday and Wednesday for a new podcast episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to check out that Scorpio full moon video. And I look forward to seeing you back here again soon. And welcome to Taurus season.